Good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for listening to this presentation in how to use uh, 3D transesophageal echocardiography to assess uh, paravalvular leaks in clinical scenarios. As you know, I have no disclosures uh, uh, to discuss with the audience regarding this presentation. The two main objectives of this presentation are going to be to learn how to use 3D technology to assess mitral and prosthetic uh, uh, valves uh, to evaluate uh, paravalvular leaks in real cases. The first case that we are going to be uh, presenting, it's a 70-year-old uh, female coming for aortic valve replacement due to severe aortic stenosis um, with uh, ascending aorta repair due to ascending aorta dilatation. This lady was uh, had only like uh, one comorbidity with hypothyroidism. The bioprosthetic valve inserted by the surgeon was a magnized 23 millimeters with uh, an ascending aorta uh, 28 millimeters uh, dacron graft. So to understand how to assess uh, an aortic valve prosthesis, it's important to remember the anatomical plates. Um, in this representation, uh, I presented uh, this from an auricular view into the ventricles. We are just removing the atriums from the heart and we are looking down to the ventricles. And it will represent the different cutting planes to expose the aortic valve during uh, TE. At 45 degrees, uh, we can see the midesophageal short axis view of the aortic valve, where the left coronary cusp is next to the pulmonary valve, and the right and non coronary cusp are going to be close to the tricuspid valve. At 130 degrees, as shown here, uh, we can see the midesophageal long axis view of the aortic valve, where the right coronary cusp is below, and the upper cusps can be either the non or the left. The more the angle, the more possibilities that is going to be the left. The less the angle, the more possibilities uh, that is going to be the non. Finally, to assess for paravalvular leaks, uh, we will be using the clock number description to guide our surgeon. And as Wendy pointed out in her lecture, um, we will see 12 will be on top of the right coronary cusp and 6 will be between the left and non-coronary cusp, 3 into the left coronary cusp, and 9 into the non-coronary cusp. This clock uh, guidance was defined by Alhuli and colleagues for prosthesis, and by Pivarot and colleagues for Tavars or Tavis. If we start with the sore axis view of the aortic valve at 45 degrees, as we can see here, uh, this will be equivalent to the parasternal short axis by transthoracic, and the cusp will be presented as you can see right now. The 12 o'clock position is going to be where the right coronary cusp is, and the 6 o'clock position is going to be between the non and the left. To translate that into 3D, you will be looking uh, from the short axis view and those are the positions equivalent in 3D. When we do it from the aortic valve long axis view, as we can see here at 130 degrees, this will be equivalent to the parasternal long axis view by transthoracic. And the o'clock position for six and eight will be situated on the top and from 11 to two at the bottom of the aortic valve. And that's the equivalent image. So when we came off pump, uh, we went into the trancastric long axis view to visualize our new bioprosthetic aortic valve replacement, which in this case was like a magnet 23 millimeters. We put a colorful doper as you can see on the right side of the screen. And in this case, uh, we can see a myelic coming from the 12 to two o'clock position. Just there. Let me magnify it. There it is, uh, which is equivalent to the position between the right and left coronary cusp. And again, remember the incidence of paravalvular leaks in aortic valve replacements is between 2 and 10 percent, much less than in mitral valves, and is uh, most commonly located uh, along the non coronary or right coronary cusp. 
and the small jets are, or discrete jets are more difficult to assess. So this following table has been modif uh, modified from Ruiz and colleagues uh, with the most important quantitative uh, parameters to assess paravalvular leaks in prosthetic aortic valves. The quantifications of um, these, para the, these parameters um, that can better be estimated by 3D rather than with 2D are the following, which is going to be your vena contract width, jet to LVOT ratio, and the circumferential extent. For those of you that are, that are not familiar with the circumferential extent, this can, this can be calculated as the sum of the paravalvular leak jack circumference divided by the valve circumference, and is considered mild when it's less than 10% and severe when it's more than 30%. From a 3D perspective, exposing the new bioprosthetic aortic valve, uh, the o'clock positions are displayed as you can see now. So if we focus in the region between 12 and 2 o'clock, we will be able to see the very mild leak. To assess the paravalvular leak, we can use multiplane reconstruction by selecting in this example the 3D Q uh, function from the Philips. Then in the green plane on the upper left uh, section of the screen, you should align the red line, which is the corresponding line to the red plane, perpendicular to the jet vena contracta width, and the blue line parallel to the jet vena contracta width in the middle of it. You then look to the red plane, which is in the upper uh, right side part of the, of the screen, and this red plane will be equivalent in this example to the short axis view of your aortic valve prosthesis. And you should have the green line and the blue line intersecting both of them in the middle of the paravalvular leak jet cross sectional area. The cross sectional area of the 3D vena contracta width will be then displayed in the red plane as follows. So if you select the red plane display along to get a better view on the screen, um, this can be improved a little bit more and better by using the magnifying uh, tool and you can increase up to 200% to be able to see the area uh, a little bit better. Then you use the basic measurements tool, which is shown here, and after using that, you trace the 3D vena contractor width by clicking in the right side of the node of the trackball until finish, and then you click in the left side node. The software will automatically calculate the area for you and display it into the right upper part of the screen. In this example, it was measured as 0 0.09 centimeters to the square, which is consistent with mild regurgitation. And again, remember, to calculate the circumferential extent, you need to divide the paravalvular leak jet circumference by the valve circumference. And the quantification will be mild if it's less than 10% and severe if it's more than 30%. Anything in between is considered moderate. Now we are going uh, to follow with our second case. In this case, we are going to be presenting a 78-year-old male coming for redo AVR and mitral valve replacement due to severe MS and a severe bioprosthetic aortic valve stenosis, which was previously inserted in 2013. The patient had important comorbidities too, as OSA, emphysema, chronic kidney disease, diabetes, and severe left-sided carotid stenosis, with a challenging case. The surgeon performed a redo tissue ABR with a 25 magnase and a, a tissue mitral valve replacement with a 27 magnase and the reconstruction of the intervalvular fibrous body plus one autocoronary bypass. When we need to assess a mitral valve prosthesis using 3D imaging, it's always good to understand the anatomical reference to not get lost or disoriented. Uh, this representation again is presented from an auricular perspective into the ventricles. 
representing the different cutting planes to expose the mitral valve during transesophageal echo. The location of the paravalvular leaks in mitral valve prosthesis will be described as per the mitral valve scalars. The o'clock reference can also be used for the mitral valve prosthesis, as we can see now. Remember that for aortic valve prosthesis, though, the 3 and 9 o'clock positions are inverted compared to the mitral valve prosthesis to assess paravalvular leaks. There. To report a mitral valve prosthesis paravalvular leak location, we will use the extrapolation of the Carpentier mitral valve classification. When we use 3D color flow in a prosthetic mitral valve, the position of the mitral valve scallops will be used to locate the leak. In this example, uh, you can see here the leak is between A3 and P3. If this was a mitral uh, periprosthetic transcatheter leak reduction, the o'clock reference can be used as per Mathieu and colleagues. And remember that up to 27% of the patients where you are able to find one leak, they may have more than one leak. So it's better to look uh, well before you miss one. In this case, we started by examining the new bioprosthetic mitral valve. At the mitral valve commissural view, we could see a paravalvular leak. Then we perform a quantitative assessment of the paravalvular leak, quantifying the leak as mild. We did then color uh, continuous with Doppler assessment to assess for possible patient prosthesis mismatch but the velocity and mean gradient of the uh, mitral, new mitral valve prosthesis were normal. A velocity less than 2.5 and mean gradient less than 5. In our case, here we can see a clear paravalvular leak coming from the A3 and P3 or at 3 o'clock, as shown here. The parameters that can be used to better quantify the degree of paravalvular leak by using 3D when compared to 2D are summarized in the following table, which are vena contracta width and circumferential extent for mitral valve prosthesis. This table from Ruiz and colleagues has been modified with the most important quantitative parameters to assess paravalvular leaks in the prosthetic mitral valves. To better assess the degree of a paravalvular leak in a new mitral valve prosthesis with 3D, we can use two multiplane reconstruction, as we are going to show next. So, to be able to use multiplane reconstructions from the Philips Q Lab again, you will need to go to 3DQ. Then, in the green plane, which is equivalent in this case to the uh, midesophageal mitral commissural view in TE, you align the red line perpendicular to the vena contracta of the paravalvular leak recogitant jet, followed by the alignment of the blue line parallel to the vena contracta of the paravalvular leak recogitant jet. Then you look into the red plane on the top right side of the screen, which is 90 degrees apart, and you want to see that the green and blue lines are intersecting at the, vena contract, at the middle of the vena contracta width of the paravalvular leak recogitant jet 2. Finally, the cross-sectional area of the 3D vena contracta width will be then displayed in this particular case in the blue plane, with the green and red lines intersecting in the middle, which is at the bottom left part of the screen. By selecting the blue plane display, we will then use the basic measurements tool again to trace the 3D vena contracta width. And the software will calculate the area for you. In our case, it measured 0.11 centimeters to the square, which is consistent with mild degree. And again, to calculate the circumferential extent, you will need to divide the paravalvular leak jet circumference by the, wave, uh, by the valve circumference 
and this classification, this quantification will be mild if it's less than 30% and severe if it's more than 30%. Anything in between, it will be considered as moderate. Finally, um, in this uh, RT valve prosthesis, instead of using multiplayer reconstructions, we can use something which is simpler and still a 3D tool, which is explain. And by using explain, you can add explain color flow Doppler. And you can assess in real time your aortic valve uh, uh, replacement in the long axis view and short axis view. As you can see here, we can see a mild leak, a mild leak at eight o'clock, with the jet directed towards uh, six o'clock. So always remember that if you use X plane from the long axis view the 90 degrees perpendicular image gen generated to the right side of the screen will pass 180 degrees. And as you can see on top, it says 215 and minus 11. So it will give you an inverted image of where is your leak. You can avoid that by using right invert. If you press the right invert function in the tactile screen, so the right side image that is generated will be 90 degrees less from the left, uh, left uh, uh, from the long axis view of the Arctic valve. So it will be 125 minus 90, which in this case will be 35 degrees, as you can see here. And then in this view, the paravalvular leak will be originated from opposite sides that when we were seeing first. So my recommendation, if you, want, if you don't want to get uh, lost when assessing a paravalvular leak, I would recommend you to start from the short axis view and go into the long axis view. And from the short axis view, do X plane on the short axis view and then get the long axis view. But you can always use the writing bird function to get both at the same time, the long axis and the short axis view of the Arctic graph. And that is where we are. Thank you very much uh, for your attention, and I will be happy to answer all your questions in the Q&A session.